Okay, I think it's time to begin some serious kinematics. That's right, exciting news, things will start moving. Now again, I'm going to start with the most simple case we can think of. And the simplest case of motion I can think of is what we call as Bob in smooth motion. Now the technical te term for smooth motion is called as a uniform motion. Now what does that mean? Well before I tell you what it means, I just want you to get a feel for what uniform motion looks like. So here's Bob and he's at rest right now, but I'm going to give him a tap like this and the Bob starts moving and whatever that motion is, is uniform motion. So first get a feeling of what uniform or smooth motion is. Here goes, Guala. Did you see that? So what did Bob do? Well, I want you to look at it again, but this time we're going to put an axis, okay? Here's our axis. So here's the axis and I've, I'm, I've kept the Bob, I've kept Bob at origin and I've taken right side as positive. And here's a clock. Here's going to be our ticking clock somewhere. Here's the clock. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to redo the experiment, but I'm going to give, just, just give Bob a tap. This time the clock will start ticking. And once it ticks, I want you to just keep a note of the position. The clock will start ticking the moment Bob hits uh, x equal to 1. That's when t will be equal to 0. That's when it starts ticking. So t equals 0 when Bob is at x equal to 1. Okay? Then I want you to carefully look and see how the position of Bob changes as time passes by. And maybe you'll get an idea of what is uniform in this uniform motion. Alright? So let's redo it. Could you figure it out? Yes? No? Well, if you couldn't figure it out, go back, rewind, play it again, and see if you can see what is uniform in that. Mm, no? All right, don't worry. I'm gonna tell you what it is. So, I have the situation drawn. So let me get rid of this, and let me bring in this. All right, so this is what the motion look like. So what I've drawn over here is I've drawn the positions of Bob at different instants of time. You see, I can't animate, right? So I have to somehow draw this animation. So that means, see, as I told you, when the Bob, Bob was at one meter, the time is zero. And then if you looked at the animation carefully, you would see that at time one second, Bob has come to x equal to three. And at two seconds, he's at x equal to five, and so on and so forth. What is so special about this motion? I mean, you could see that it was smooth, but what is the speciality of smooth motion in mathematical terms? Well, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna look at the time interval and we're gonna track its change in position. Let's see, from zero to two seconds, let's look at the situation from zero to two. What is the interval? Well, from zero to two is two seconds, right? That's the time span. So time span is two seconds. And can you think how much is the change in position? So it was over here to begin with and it is right now over here. So how much has its position changed from 1 to 5? That is 1, 2, 3, 4. So the position change is plus 4 meter. Notice I'm putting a plus. The plus sign represents the position has increased. Okay. If it had moved towards the left side, it would have been decrease in position. So the position has increased by 4 meters. Let's take some other time interval. Let's go from 1 to 3. 1 to 3, what is the time span? Well, that's again 2 seconds. And what's the change in position? Uh, it's again at 3 and it goes to 7. 3 to 7 is 4. You see that? One, two, three, four. It's again a plus four meter. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Let's look one final one. Let's look at one final time it's from zero to three. And you can see from zero to three is a time span of three seconds. And what is the change in position? Hmm, that's I think one, two, three, four, five, six. Six meters. So again, that's a plus six meters. Do you see some sort of a trend here? There is some something going on. Well, if you don't notice it, just divide the two. You can see four by two is two, all right? If you divide the two, you get two. You get a two here, six by three is also two. So what you're seeing is that the position change per time interval, that is a constant. 
Let me write that down. See, we're gonna represent position change by the symbol delta x. Delta stands for change. I'm gonna write that here somewhere. Delta is change. Okay? And in physics, whenever you hear the word change, it is always calculated as the final value minus the initial value. It could be change in momentum, say final momentum minus initial momentum. It could be change in volume, final volume minus initial volume. Right now, it's the change in position, delta x, change in position. And we're gonna calculate delta x as the final position minus the initial position. That's exactly how I got six over here. You see that? The final position is seven. And the initial position is 1, 7 minus 1 is 6. That's how you get the change in position. So what I'm trying to tell you over here is the change in position, I'm going to write that down here, the change in position delta x divided by, divided by the time interval. I'm going to call this time interval as delta t. Okay, this is the time it takes for the change of position. Divided by delta t is a constant and in our case, it is 2. And let's see, does this constant have a unit? Yes, it does. You see, changes in position is given by meters, and time is given by second, so it's a 2 meter per second. What this constant is telling is that Bob, in this example, is moving or is changing its position by 2 meters for every single second. In fact, that's what is smooth. The smoothness here is the way Bob is changing its position. It's doing it uniformly. For every second, he is increasing its position by two meters. So the ratio is always going to remain a constant regardless of where you do the maths, wherever you find this. And you don't have to wait for one second. Even if you wait for half a second, you will find the change in position to be one meter, such that one by half still gives you two. So regardless of how small time interval you take, you will always find that delta x by delta t is going to remain two. And that's the characteristic feature of smooth motion. Okay, so the rate at which the, more, the position is changing, that is a constant, okay? And this is an important quantity in physics. It's gonna often turn up, and so we better give it a name, and the name we give to this guy is called as the average velocity. Let me write that down. This is a very important term. Average velocity. Some people like to put um, write average velocity this way. It could also be written this way. But I like to just put a bar over there. Why is it called as average? Well, we'll be we'll answer that some in some other episode. But just for now, just remember this. It's called as an average velocity. And we might as well define one more thing. Change in position. This term is also given a name, and we call this as displacement. change in position is what we call as displacement. So in this example, average velocity is a constant. It's not changing, it remains two meters per second. So can we build the equation now? Yes, yes we can. Let's see, how do we build the equation? To build the equation, what we will do is, we will consider the initial time as t equal to zero, so the initial position is one meter. We'll take that as our initial case. And our final case, we'll just take it somewhere. We'll just take a random point somewhere over here. Okay? And we'll just call this as x. And we'll call this at some random time t. So, what does delta x represent in our case? Well, delta x is going to be, remember, final position, which is some random value x, minus initial position, which I've taken it as one, one, divided by delta t, let me write that here. What is delta t? Well, delta t is final time. Final time is some random time t, minus initial time. Initial time is, well, time t equal to zero. And this number 
in our example is 2. So what is the equation? Well, we just have to solve this and the equation turns out to be x equal to 1 plus 2t. Ta-da! Congratulations! Our first kinematic equation for moving things. This equation represents this motion. Let's see how. If we put t equal to 0, we now get x equal to 1. Ah, exactly. If you put t equal to 1, you get x equal to 1 plus 2, that is 3. That's right, at t equal to 1, x equal to 3. You put any value of time here, and it's going to tell you what the position is. This is what we call as the position function. All right, let me just write the name over there. It's just a fancy name. It's called as the position function. Basically, it just tells you where Bob is at any given moment in time. So you put some input for the time and the equation spits out what the location of Bob is. That's why it's called as position, okay? All right, now, time to graph this guy. Again, I want to graph this fellow intuitively. Um, until you get a good grasp of what a graph is, we're gonna graph these guys intuitively. So again, I'm gonna take a fresh paper to try and graph this. So let's graph this guy, okay? All right, again, let's begin with our clock. Right now, our clock is at t equal to zero. I just start my clock and it's at t equal to zero. And t equal to zero, what does the situation look like? Well, Bob is over here at x equal to one. So let me draw that. Let me just draw it over here. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna draw it in the vertical. Okay, so here's the vertical. The, uh, the table over here, just like what I did before. Okay, and put the markings. So I'm going to mark from here, this is 0, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I don't think these are uniformly spaced, but you'll get some idea of what's going on. So right now, at t equal to 0, Bob is at this location, right? That's what you see here. Over here at t equal to zero, Bob is at this location at one meter. So I'm again, I'll write down this is at t equal to zero. What do we do next? You guys know the procedure now. We allow the time to tick for a while and then we look at Bob's position once again, take a snapshot, redraw it over here. Let's do that. Let's wait for one second. At t equal to one second, he looks over here. So he looks like this. See, he looks at it's that, at that particular point. So, at t equal to one second, I'm gonna redraw it over here. Somewhere over here, maybe. This thing doesn't look very straight, but it's okay. You should be able to get some sort of an intuition. This is at t equal to one second. And where is Bob? He's at x equal to three. So, he's over here now, okay? And this is at t equal to one second. I know it's tedious, yes. That's okay. I'm gonna do this for the last time. In the future episodes, I'm just gonna draw the graph directly. But as of now, let's do the hard work. I'm doing the hard work. You just sit and sit back and enjoy. All right, we wait for one more second and look at the universe. What does the universe look like? Well, the universe just has Bob in it and he's moving along a straight line. This is a straight line. And at t equal to two seconds, he's at x equal to five. So he is over here. Ooh, can you see what the graph looks like? Do you want me to draw one more? Okay, I'm gonna draw one more. I'm gonna draw one more. Oh, okay. Last one, guys. Last one. This is at t equal to three seconds. <sighs> here it is. Three equals ten seconds. He's at seven. Seven is somewhere here. It's a little bit out of bounds, but it's okay. Ooh, I've done a decent job. Even without a ruler, I'm actually proud of myself. You see what I've done? Can you, can you tell me what does the graph look like? See, here again, here's the time axis. Here's time. And here is my position. X. Would you look at the graph? Oh, the graph is so beautiful. Look at that. If I had plotted it for every single moment in time, what would the graph look like? It's, it's, it's a straight line. That's a straight line. So, 
I'm gonna draw a miniature version of that graph over here, so I want to fit this whole thing in my small sheet over here. So here is my X, and here is my time axis. So here is time in seconds, and this is in meters. And let me just put one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. Okay. So what does the graph look like? Look at this. The graph is a straight line this way. Okay. So let me draw that over here. This is what the graph looks like. Beautiful, isn't it? Look at that. So this equation and this graph is identical. So we have finally built an equation and a graph for Bob in smooth motion. So what is smooth? Remember, what is smooth? The average velocity is a constant. Okay. Now, in the next episode, <laughs> I have something great in store for you. I'm going to ask you one radical question about velocity. So, stay tuned for more. See you next time.